Hey, Richard here uh, again. Um, you know, I'm with the blog Facts Working People. I wanted to uh, say a few words about um, this question of the the class issue in America and how the I, how I, one of the reasons why identity politics is so uh, um, oppressive, so prominent, is the object is to obscure the class question in any way. Those that talk about um, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, stress identity and everything else. They uh, and call class reductionists anybody that raises the issue of class. Class reductionism is a term used. Most workers wouldn't know what it what it means anyway. We don't use it. Um, uh, it's generally used by uh, the liberal middle class, the liberal petty bourgeois, if you like, um, uh, uh, or left petty bourgeois, as a means of uh, uh, accusing white workers of being racist. That's primarily what it what it what it is. They've supplanted the term intersectionality uh, 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 for um, class solidarity and for <coughs> solidarity with the specially oppressed sections of society. And wh while some young people may use intersectionality, intersectionality and mean that, um, those who promote it are actually very conscious of class, which is their class, the, 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 the petty bourgeois, the, 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 the middle class, and they want to elevate their, their uh, class position in society in relation to big capital and to the, the ruling class, of course. But this, the, this uh, shutdown of, uh, of, of the class question is very powerful here. And of course, the trade union heads, the officialdom of the trade union movement, they don't counter that. Uh, they use the term middle class for workers. They don't teach history, really. Uh, they, 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 they also play their part uh, with, with the team concept, which is that the employers and the workers um, have the same interests. Therefore, uh, uh, you know, we have to help our employer, our immediate employer, compete uh, against other, uh, to, for, for market share with other employers in the marketplace which automatically puts us at odds with workers in the our employer's competitor. So we're put into competition with other workers uh, um, for who can work more efficiently, who can do without uh, uh, cut corners, who can do without certain safety measures, not take a lunch break here, and so forth. We're in competition. We can't build a, a working class movement, a strength, strong working class movement, uh, um, competing with other workers for who can best help their employer a corner of the market and drive their rivals out of the marketplace. It's a little bit different in the public sector. We used to call it, when I was there, they would call it an active in the union. They would call it... Um, uh, that we have to uh, oh what was the word we they used I forget I forget now uh, uh, but, but we had to we were always threatened also with if we don't uh, uh, improve if we don't work smarter and everything else we we're, they'll privatize us in other words we were in competition with the workers in the private sector uh, in order to save our jobs competitive bidding is what they called it. And um, so this cl question of class here, you know, the 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 the, uh, uh, the, the p people of color and especially oppressed minorities, uh, black folks and so forth, they've all fought for uh, they fought also for their history, racial history. Uh, and so you'll get ethnic studies. They won ethnic studies and things like this. And uh, um, but it's like uh, uh, that, too obscures the the class question like when we have when I the place I used to work at when you'd have they got this different hif history months for different ethnic groups so they're going to run out of months here pretty soon but um black history month for for example was never about the the black working class it was always about those a, a black artist or the, the, a, a black entrepreneur uh, and, and and so forth and Malcolm X and Martin Luther King were obscured. They were can They're carnivalized. Their ideas are not really discussed. And uh, sometimes they're just thrown in the mix, even with uh, people like Farrakhan, who's a nationalist and, a, and a, a more in common with a Republican than he would have in common with um, uh, uh, Malcolm X. And it's, so it's just a black thing. So the class question is very, very deeply suppressed in this country. And one, I was thinking about it, just as I'm reading here some history about the United States, is without the class question, you're lost. Because what do they do? You know, people, a guy says to me the other day about, uh, I was telling him about my dad was a prisoner of war in Japan. And um, you get this, 
oh, th uh, thank, thank him for serving, you know, uh, thank you for your service, sir, or I want to, th to a veteran from Vietnam, or so I thank them for their service. W what service is that? That we're to, we're, 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 that the service that we're supposed to believe they were function they were uh, uh, providing was defending us from enemies, defending our way of life as workers. Uh, uh, but our way of life of workers was not threatened by anybody in Vietnam. It's not been threatened by anybody in in, in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan or Grenada or Panama or or or, or, or the Congo. Or, or, or any, or Iran, or any of these places, if we see ourselves clearly as workers. None of these conflicts that, well, Vietnam was 67,000 American lives for three or four million Vietnamese. It's probably one of the most brutal uh, and his, uh, historic, modern, uh, hot, historic uh, war crimes of the, of, the, of the last century or so, uh, the, the, what the US did to Vietnam. But if you can't see, or if you don't have a strong sense of us as a class, not just domestically, but internationally. If we don't have that, we, it's easier to fall for them to convince us that we're all in this together. In some ways, we know we're not in this together, but it gets complicated when we don't control the media, when their media is, is particularly in this country, is completely uh, uh, controlled, uh, is probably the most censored in of all the advanced capitalist countries. Most Americans have no idea what geography uh, is. When, no, when they bombed Iraq, most of uh, it was a huge percentage, somewhere in the 60 or 70 percent, never knew where Iraq was. Had no clue about that. They know nothing about the history of Haiti and why that will never develop as long as American imperialism exists. And I'm just finishing that book by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz about uh, the native history. And it's fascinating that what, it re what I like about it, one thing I like about it, is that it really links the, uh, even though it's, it's obvious that most native people will talk about the white man did this and the white man did that. But, the, but, but uh, in her book, for example, she clearly links the, um, the, the casting off of the peasantry of the land in Britain uh, as the capitalism arose and the mercantile capitalism, the sheep and wool manufacturing, which was the first major uh, industry uh, and in competition with the Dutch, the, the peasantry were driven off the land, thrown into poverty. Then they made begging illegal and, 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 and vagrancy a capital crime. And industrial capital, capitalism hadn't developed enough to absorb that labor. And they were then um, uh, the workhouses uh, uh, came about. Labor was exported to the colonies here. The, the, the first uh, uh, permanent settlement here, Jamestown, the fine, the, the, that was allowed, chartered by the feudal aristocracy. But behind it were the emerging capitalist class. They were looking for trade. They were looking for, mer uh, for, 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 for new trade, new commodities with which to trade and, 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 and increase their wealth. And so they imported labor and they imported poor people, Irish people, Scots people, English peasants. Uh, and of course, they brought Africans from Africa. And so uh, and eventually uh, a slavery arose in the colonies, in, in the uh, in, in the Anglo-American colonies, complete ownership of a human being. And so what in that little speech of Martin Luther King, when he talks about the um, the uh, Homestead Act, what they had to do with that labor that they brought here from Europe that uh, and, and I don't care who you are if you're standing in quagmire with a person of another nationality or religion or something or color and and the, and the, and the person over is over you is is exploiting both of you you develop a bond and they had to break those bonds I've talked about the invention of the white race that's how they did that here they made Irish people the same race as the English this is laughable in English history. The Irish were the savage race, the white chimpanzees. They were the first colony of England. So they, 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 there was no way that that would have occurred in, in, in England. But it, it did here as a means of, 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 under, of, of um, for the ruling class, the developing ruling class in this country, exploiting the labor that it brought and dividing them along color lines and race lines. That thing's sort of mixed up here. 
And so when they had the, as Martin Luther King explained in that speech he did about the Homestead Act, the black black people weren't uh, were excluded from that. They had to create an economic foundation for the white working class, more mostly formerly peasants of Europe, poverty stricken peasants, and some criminals and the lowest elements of society, but mostly poor peasants. They had to create an economic base for them and offer them a future. And the uh, and and that future was the taking of all the land from the native people that lived on it, uh, just uh, driving them out of it. Uh, the history of the uh, colonial war against the um, native people in the in actually in the whole New World, what they call the New World, um, is, is 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 barbaric. It's um, it's incredible that they are still here. It's a testament to them that they are still here. Um, but so they had to do that, and that's why they introduced these measures to divide uh, the oppressed peoples, including the white working class in this country, along racial, religious, and color lines. To the to, and it meant uh, almost genocide. Well, it was a genocidal war against the native people, and and three centuries of slavery for black for the Africans for black people in this country, and. So the thing is, if you don't have, if we don't have a sense of class, uh, then we lose. It, it's much easier, and that's that's the case here in the United States. I mean, when, when the f first Iraq War took place, it was unbelievable to me. Nobody had ever. Uh, that most Americans hate the government. And most of the blue collar guys, are, you know, the right wing, more conservative elements. The government this, the government that, where, and uh, and suddenly Hussein pictures of Hussein appeared in the machine shop and everybody else with a target on it, and they were our enemy. Everybody rallies around the flag, right? We're not the same as the just it, the, the what the nation state does, and this idea of indivisible. It's, of course, it's divisible. There's ruling class and there's working class in, and they 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 have opposing interests. Our allies. Are the workers in Panama? Are the workers in Grenada? Are the workers in Vietnam? We we have different language differences and so forth. But the, but it, as far as our lives, our very existence, we, we have much more in common, and that's what they want to obscure. And in this country, it's every other issue other than the class. They've done a very good job. Plus, we've not had a political party of our own uh, 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 that that has, which is the consciousness of a class. And it's very different a political party to a trade union. It governs society. It talks about trade. It's a different ball game and uh, and, and increases class consciousness in that sense and a wider class consciousness. But anyway, I was just thinking about this because I was reading that, as I say, I'm at the end of um, uh, an indigenous people's history of the United States, and I really encourage people to read that book. I've, I've, I've uh, encouraged a lot of people to read that book, and I hopefully want to write a little bit about what I thought of it. But uh, these are just some of my thoughts about the situation and where we're at at the moment. We're never in this together, uh, and uh, because of that lack of class consciousness, the coming struggles, in my opinion, there's going to be some serious violence in this country. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer that the working class will struggle to change society and out of the there will be steps forward, steps back, new leaderships will emerge, consciousness can change very quickly in the, in the in when the struggle breaks into the open and I think that um, whether just even though the, the most of the industrial working class uh, does not uh, has left this country um, Sorry, I thought it ended. As uh, has moved to the east these days, uh, we cannot change a, a society uh, without uh, the American working class settling accounts with the um, ruling class in this country. So these are a few of my thoughts, just right off the cuff. I've been thinking about it when I was walking, and uh, it's Richard Richard Miller with the Facts for Working People blog. We know what's up. Blogspot.com is our URL, or look for us at Facts for Working People. Thanks.